Hi everyone, let us discuss this result. So in this result, we have a vector field f. The given information is that f has a potential function phi and we have to prove that f has, f is conservative, getting? So see, I have mentioned the given information f has a potential function phi. So that's why f bar is equal to gradient of phi. That means f bar is equal to del phi. What we have to prove? We have to simply prove that f bar is conservative. That means line integral of f okay is independent on curve it depends on only an end points okay so let us consider any arbitrary curve in uh, this set u which is subset of rn so let let me mention here let c be any oriented curve okay so it's oriented curve in u from v naught to v1 so i'm considering any arbitrary curve here c okay which is from v naught to v1. After that, what will we consider? We will consider its parameterization. Let alpha be a parameterization of this curve C. So let alpha defines from close interval a b to u b a parameterization. Okay. So parameterization of C. And let me mention alpha of a is equal to v naught and alpha of b is equal to v1. Okay, let me show it here. That means alpha is defined on close interval a b, which is subset of R obviously. Okay, so we have this alpha, which is from close interval a b to u. Alpha of a is equal to v naught, that means the starting point, and alpha of b is equal to v1, which is the ending point. Okay, so this thing we have. And let me add one more thing and and alpha is defined in this way alpha of t is equal to it will have n number of components alpha 1 of t alpha 2 of t and so on alpha n of t okay so what we have considered we have considered any curve c which is from v naught to v1 having a parameterization alpha okay and we have to prove that the line integral of f okay over c is independent on c depends only on n points v naught and v1 so let us calculate line integral of f over c so consider let me write here consider integration of f bar dot dr bar over c so you know well how to find its uh, line integral how to solve the line integral okay so it is a vector field so we have a definition for that so what we write integration See, C has a parameterization alpha, which is defined on closed interval a, b. So that's why limits of this integral will be a to b. Line integral of vector field we define in this way, inner product of f of alpha of t, right, comma, alpha dash of t dt. So this is equal to integration a to b, inner product of f. See, but f bar is equal to del phi, so we can put its value there. So we can write here del phi alpha of t, okay, comma, alpha dash of t dt. See, there is no more space to write. So make a screenshot of it first, then we will go further. So let us simplify it further, okay. So integration f bar dot dr bar over c, okay, this value we are calculating. So let me write here, integration a to b inner product of del phi so del is a operator okay which is defined in this way divided by x1 divided by x2 divided by x3 and so on so that definition of del i'm going to use here so that's why we'll have deba phi by deba x1 of alpha of t i should write obviously next deba phi by deba x2 of alpha of t okay and so on what will we have the last component will be deba phi by deba xn of alpha of t right Okay, this bracket is over here, comma. After that, alpha dash of t. So already I have defined alpha of t is alpha 1 of t, alpha 2 of t, and so on alpha n of t. So we are taking derivatives. That's why we will take the derivative of each component. So we'll have like this, alpha 1 dash of t, alpha 2 dash of t, and so on, alpha n dash of t, okay? I should finish the inner product here, and dt will be there, okay? So inner product I have finished here. So let me remove this one. It is not required. That step is not required now. So you know well how to find the value of inner product. Okay. Integration A to B. 
so inner product uh, when we solve we take the product of first component and first component there plus second component into second component plus and so on last component into last component so let us follow the definition of inner product so we'll have daba phi by daba x1 of alpha of t okay into alpha 1 dash of t plus daba phi daba x2 of alpha of t into alpha 2 dash of t and so on so okay i will skip that thing plus i will write finally daba phi by daba xn of alpha of t right into alpha n dash of t dd okay so the same thing we can write in a form of summation also so this is equal to integration a to b summation i running from 1 to n daba phi by daba xi of alpha of t right into alpha i dash of t dt in a form of summation i have expressed right so see uh, this is nothing but integration a to b summation i running from 1 to n daba phi by daba xi of alpha of t getting into derivative of alpha i that means uh, same thing we can write in this way also alpha derivative of alpha i of t okay into dt okay so it is not there dt is there so what we get actually let me show you here so we have a function phi which is a function of n components okay just like this one x1 x2 and so on we have xa and all these are functions of t getting all these are functions of t in this way okay yes so but alpha x1 is nothing but alpha 1 of t getting since it has a parameterization the first component of alpha of t that means x1 is nothing but alpha 1 of t this is nothing but alpha 2 of t and this is nothing but alpha n of t getting so we are what we are doing we are taking derivative of phi with respect to xi and after that into derivative of xi that means nothing but alpha i with respect to t so by chain rule what can we write getting so we are getting chain rule so derivative of phi with respect to xi and derivative of xi with respect to t so directly we can write derivative of phi with respect to t so that's why this is equal to integration a to b this is derivative of phi with respect to t of alpha of t directly we can write obviously dt will be there i should write the reason that is by chain rule getting so by chain rule so what will happen the derivative and integration will get cancelled to each other and we will simply have here phi of alpha of t okay with limits a to b so this derivative integration will get cancelled to each other simply we have to consider upper and lower limit so you know well after that we put upper limit here so let me put upper limit so phi of alpha of b minus i am putting upper limit lower limit phi of alpha of a but see already initially we have defined alpha of b is nothing but v1 and alpha of a is nothing but v0 so this is phi of v1 minus phi of v0 getting so what we go, uh, got here finally that means we are finding the value of line integral of f over c and finally we got the its value which depends only on v0 and v1 that means starting point and ending point so that's why we say the line integral of f is independent on path and depends on end points only so that's why we can declare therefore f is conservative okay let me use this space to write so therefore f bar is conservative okay so i will repeat the reason we are saying this one because the line integral of f depends only on starting and ending point getting end points only so and it does not depend on the curve which we, uh, we we have taken c so that's why we say the field is conservative so in this way we have completed this proof make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you bye bye